Join me on a trip to Vancouver for about three days as I share everything that I ate while I was on my trip to Vancouver. We'll cover everything from dumplings to noodles, as well as some delicious pastries and smoked salmon. Let's get into it. Hey guys, it's Rachel and today I am on a road trip actually up to Vancouver. So I will be sharing everything I ate during my time in Vancouver. Our first stop is actually Tim Hortons, which I feel like is a classic Canadian um, fast food spot. It's basically the equivalent of Dunkin' Donuts or Starbucks in America. So I don't think I've ever been, which means I'm really excited to try out some of the coffee and donuts there. All right, let's go. As soon as we crossed the border, we stopped by the nearest Tim Hortons and got some breakfast. I did some research on popular donuts and drinks, and this is what I ended up with. So we are at Tim Hortons, we've got donuts. So we have this Boston cream donut, we have an apple fritter here, and then of course, the legendary Beeb's Brew. For some reason, they didn't give me um, a container that says Beeb's Brew on it, it just says Tim Hortons, but we'll try it out. A little watery, to be honest. It's, um, it feels very diluted. A little hazelnutty, but it's okay. All right, time for donuts. Pretty sweet, a little apple-y, very cinnamony, but I kind of like apple fritters with a more glazed and like tough crust. A really pillowy apple fritter that's kind of soft in, in texture. So if you've ever been to Sidecar Donuts in LA, I would definitely recommend that for their apple fritters. So things were not off to a great start. After we finished our subpar donuts and coffee, we headed over to lunch at Shanghai River Restaurant. This place came highly recommended to us from some friends and we decided to check it out. They're known for Shanghainese food. Of course, we had to get the XLBs and we dipped them, of course, in the black vinegar and ginger soy sauce. They came out piping hot and super fresh. We got a dumpling here and I do a little dippy in the back. Oh. So much juice just came out of that. Got a lot of soup. Oh man. Each bite was packed with flavor. The skin was really soft and delicate, and I enjoyed it. Next up, we ordered the fried Shanghai style rice cakes, which came with some veggies and a little bit of meat as well. Not good one, okay. So like, um, like a nice grilled, sort of charred flavor from being on the wok. Flavor-wise, it could be a little bit stronger. Like the sauce. And then to wrap it up, we ordered the pan-fried pork buns, which came in five pieces, and they had super crispy bottoms and were packed with soup flavor as well. These were probably the hottest buns, so it was a struggle not to burn in my tongue while I was eating them. Overall, getting lunch at Shanghai River Restaurant was super delicious, a great little way to ease ourselves into some good Asian food for this trip. A few hours later, we had dinner in downtown Vancouver at this place called Saku. The ambiance and interior design of the space was actually so beautiful, but they were most well known for their tonkatsu or fried pork cutlet. We ordered up the hire curry, which I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing that correctly, but it's a deep fried breaded pork filet with some signature curry over rice. It was super crispy and the curry had a super nice and rich flavor. We're gonna grind up the sesame seeds first, I barely see it, but... For my dish, I ordered up the cheese katsu, which had a special tonkatsu sauce you could prepare by grinding up the sesame seeds and then putting it over the sauce and mixing it together. It really elevated and added a nuttiness to the tonkatsu sauce, which I think was good because the cheese was pretty overwhelming and I think it balanced out well with that tonkatsu sauce. Overall, you could really tell the quality of the meat here was super good, but I would recommend opting for one of their traditional pork katsus. Hey guys, it's Rachel and today is day two of our Vancouver food tour. So today we will be eating at a bunch of different places, getting coffee, we're gonna get some pastries, waffles, we're gonna get some poutine hopefully. So we'll be trying out a bunch of different things and I will be bringing you along as always. So let's go ahead and get started. We ended up the next morning at Nero Waffles to try and get brunch, but the wait was about one and a half hours long, so we ended up doing takeout with their mini liege waffles, which I'm not sure if I'm saying correctly. Then we wandered down the street to Honolulu Coffee for some lattes. We got some Hawaiian Kona coffee to pair with our waffles. We are now at Honolulu Coffee. We are trying out the Hawaiian latte. I got mine with oat milk, and then my boyfriend got his with um, just regular milk, so 
we're gonna give it a go. Um, yeah, excited to try. Mmm, that's good, it's kind of coconutty. It's got like a little bit of a coconut milk aftertaste. And to go with this coffee, we actually got Nero waffles, which was just on the street. They had a really long wait. It was like an hour for a table of two. So we just decided to grab their mini liege waffles. I don't know how to say it. I think I'm probably mispronouncing it. But they're mini Belgian waffles to go. So we got a couple different flavors. The Lavender London Fog, Raspberry Original, and Lemon Bar. So they're all really fruity flavors. You might be able to see some of it, but we will do a little taste test of each of them. Oop, cheers. But yeah, it tastes like a croissant and a waffle form. So now we're gonna try out Lemon Bar, which is actually like the soggiest of all the waffles because I think it has like some sort of lemon curd on it and then a bunch of powdered sugar. But let's take a bite. This one has a lot of lemon curd, so if you're into that, this is for you. I personally like it without the white chocolate. I think it's really good just on its own. So far, my favorite actually has just been the original classic waffle, so less is more sometimes. That's what I think. So we are now on our last waffle, which is the raspberry waffle. It's got the most white chocolate compared to all the other waffles, so let's see if this one's good. It's definitely the sweetest out of the bunch because there's so much white chocolate, but it does balance out well with the tartness of the raspberry. So I'm actually not mad at it. Maybe it's not my favorite, but it's pretty good. These are my rankings for these four waffles that we tried. I think the best flavor is actually original, followed by the Lavender London Fog, then Raspberry, and then lastly, the Lemon Bar. I ranked these in this way because I personally don't like things with a ton of white chocolate on them, so I might be a little bit biased, but all in all, the flavors are really great across all the waffles. And the coffee is the perfect pairing with it. I think it was a good palate cleanser in between each of the waffles that we tried. So we're gonna finish these up and then um, we'll take you along to the next food place that we go to. In late afternoon, we headed over to Granville Island, very iconic marketplace, and we checked out all the different vendors. There was so much food, so many different options, it was overwhelming, honestly. We saw a huge line for this place called Lee's Donuts, we saw a la mode pies, bagels, pastries, so many different things. Hey guys, we are here at Granville Market. It is poppin', there are tons of people, and we are here to try out Longliner Seafoods because we want a taste of this salmon. So we heard about their candied salmon and also their like smoked salmon sticks, so we are interested in trying them out, and I have the candied salmon right here, and um, basically I think it's maple glazed salmon, and um, I think you have to buy them in these containers, so they're like pre-packaged and everything. We're gonna go ahead and do a taste test. We're just sitting outside. Beautiful day, very hot, obviously. Oh, I didn't see that. Yeah, it's really smoky, a little bit sweet, very soft and tender. So it kind of tastes like a barbecue pork piece of marinated salmon, which is actually really interesting. So kind of like an Asian fusion salmon. Yeah, it was about 12 bucks for this uh, small container here. So this is a double smoked sockeye stick. It's about $8 for two pieces. Um, I'll give it a taste test. Also from Longliner Seafoods. Hmm. Not as tender as the other one. I'm a lot more like savory and salty feeling. I think my preference is more for the candied, but I have a big sweet tooth, so I think that makes sense. And I also wanted to share the beautiful view with you all in the background. Take a look. Look at that bridge. So nice. For dinner, we headed over to Vancouver's Chinatown to a place called Phnom Penh, which I'm not sure if I'm saying correctly, I'm probably doing it wrong. But the food here was so good, it was definitely one of the highlights. We got the shaking beef, we got their dry noodles with shrimp and pork, as well as their iconic chicken wings. Every dish was seasoned so well, so saucy, so juicy, a little bit sweet, so if you like more savory things, maybe don't come here. But I absolutely enjoyed every single dish and we will probably rave about this for the next two years. And definitely, definitely get their iconic chicken wings. It's so garlicky and good, so crispy. I don't know how they do it, but it's a must order. So this is our last day in Vancouver. It's day three, a little bittersweet today, um, but we still have a lot of good eats in store for you all, and I'm really excited to bring you all along as always. We'll be kicking it off with some coffee and pastries. Um, maybe we'll be getting some poutine today, um, and maybe some yummy Asian food as well. So we shall see, and as always, um, come along. And before I forget, take a look at this cute Airbnb that we're staying at. 
is located in North Vancouver, but it's super close to the Capilano suspension bridge. So if this is something you're interested in, I will leave the link to the listing in the description box. Anyway, come check it out. I definitely think it's worth it. Um, it's got a really modern space, TV, two bedrooms, all of that jazz. Um, and I would definitely recommend if you are looking to stay in the North Vancouver area or just Vancouver generally because it's within driving distance to a lot of great places. So actually last night we headed to Newtown Bakery and Restaurant in Chinatown right after dinner in order to grab some pastries. It's one of those traditional Asian style bakeries that serve up a lot of classic pastries like pineapple buns or egg tarts. So we ordered up some pineapple buns, their famous apple tart, as well as a meat bun too. So yesterday we went to Newtown Bakery to get some pastries, some Chinese pastries specifically. So we got some pineapple buns, which you can see here. We also got their famous apple tart or apple pastry. I'm not sure what it was called, um, but we're gonna try them out for breakfast today. So I'm super excited. This is one of like the biggest pineapple buns I've ever seen. It's got a beautiful crust and like everyone says, um, pineapple buns don't actually have pineapple in them. They just look like pineapple. So I'm super excited to um, try this out. This is really tasty. The crust is like really buttery and not too sweet. And the bun itself is super fluffy, a little chewy, but maybe that's because it's a day old. But overall, this has really great flavor. And I want to say it's like one of the best bolo bows or pineapple buns I've ever actually tried. I'm going to get another bite for good measure. Okay, so I just cut into the apple pastry or the apple tart, which is one of their famous um, baked goods there as well. And the interior looks so flaky. The pastry is incredibly soft and layered. And then there's actually like chunks of apple almost. It kind of looks like an apple pie um, wrapped in a flaky pastry dough. And this is actually really interesting because I've never seen an apple tart or pastry at any um, Asian bakery before. So I'm kind of interested to see how this will taste. I'm thinking it might taste a little bit like an apple turnover, but we shall see. Yeah, it kind of tastes like an apple turnover. Like if you took puff pastry, folded it over a nice apple pie filling, I think this is what you would get. It's tasty, but I don't know if it's like famous worthy, question mark, but um, it's not bad. I think I like the pineapple bun more actually. So I'm gonna maybe double fist this and then just do a little then we headed over to Nemesis Coffee on Great Northern Way, which had a really interesting exterior and architecture. But yeah, doesn't it look like a huge red onion? You can't, you can't deny it. Despite it looking like a huge red onion on the outside, the interior was one of the coolest spaces I've ever been to, and their pastry selection was out of this world. I got an oat milk latte, which I thought was only okay. It was a little bit sour, but the star of the show was this orange chamomile cruffin. This cruffin came with a chamomile orange pastry cream and was topped with honey whip, honeycomb, and candied orange peel. This was a decadent pastry. We tried to split it but ended up kind of destroying it, but it was so good. I definitely recommend coming here, maybe with some friends or family, and just kind of enjoy the interior space. So no trip to Canada is complete without the classic dish of poutine. While there are a few places to get poutine in Vancouver, we ended up at Japa Dog and we got their classic meat and cheese poutine. It reminded me of chili cheese fries, but with Ikea's Swedish meatball sauce. Then it was time for the final meal at the Crystal Food Court inside Crystal Mall in Burnaby. Walking inside, it was filled with a number of vendors, tables, and great selections of food. It actually reminded me a lot of Flushing and going to the different food court malls um, in that area. Our first stop was at Shanghai Fortune Cuisine for their XLBs, which of course I had to dip into the black vinegar sauce. Those dumplings were from Shanghai Fortune Cuisine and that was really, really good. I think it was better than Shanghai River restaurant that we went to. They were packed flavor, so soupy, and the broth and the meat just tasted chef's kiss. All right, now we're gonna give the Don Don noodles a try. It's this huge bucket and it comes with all this oil. We asked for medium spicy, so hopefully it's not too bad, but we'll find out. Let's see, look at this. Ooh. You really taste that mala peppercorn spice. And it is, it's got a lot of heat in there. 
spicy. It's spicy. But it's really good. All right, I'm sweaty. We just finished the noodles and the dumplings. That was so delicious and good. The dumplings were packed with flavor and the noodles were really spicy, um, but really tasty and a lot of oil, so I'm not like 100% sure how I feel about that. But the mala peppercorn flavor was definitely there. We have a little bit more cash, so we might get one more thing, but let's see. To cool down, we hopped over to Paradise Juice to get a lychee smoothie. I'm gonna move this and he's gonna try and stab it, okay? All right, we're gonna start in three, two, one. I'm moving it now. Oh, oh, you actually, you got it. You just, so you gotta get creative sometimes. All right, so this is the lychee smoothie, I think. Lychee smoothie, however you all wanna say it. But it is from Paradise Juice, and we wanted something refreshing after all that spiciness. So, see. Mm. Very lychee, very icy. Kinda gave my tooth a tooth freeze, actually. Um, but it's nice, it's a good refreshing treat after all of that. All right, and we also got some chicken from, what is it, J&J, &J? J something, J&G. There's only one fried chicken place in this whole mall, so we got some popcorn chicken from there. Medium spicy Taiwanese fried popcorn chicken. It smells really good, it smells like five spice a little bit. I'm gonna dig into it real quick. So that's a wrap on the Crystal Mall Food Court food tour. We just ate a bunch of food, our bellies are really full, and we are ready to get back in the car to actually start our drive from Vancouver back to Seattle. So that's a wrap on our Vancouver food tour slash everything I ate while I was in Vancouver. We had a lot of great eats. We went to a lot of coffee shops, some pastry shops, got a lot of Asian food, obviously. In three days, we crammed in quite a bit of food. I would definitely say my highlights were that Vietnamese Cambodian restaurant in Chinatown. I'll list the name here, um, as well as the Crystal Mall um, food court plaza that we just went to. So we are now back on the road to Seattle, but I will leave all the names and descriptions of the dishes that we ordered in the description box down below. And if you enjoyed this video or if you have other recommendations for food to eat in Vancouver, definitely let me know in the comment section. I will be sure to check it out for the next time I will be going to Vancouver. All right, that is it and thanks so much for watching. Bye!